All right, so um, we are calling to order the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Uh, meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and GL chapter 30A section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. Um, the remote um, meeting information uh, is, let's see, dial-in number 312-626-6799. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580, and the passcode is 570012. Um, we ask that all attendees that are dialing by phone hit star six to mute. All right. So um, first up on the agenda, we had... Um, uh, Tilton Library Project update. So um, Candace and, and crew, if you wouldn't mind just kind of giving us an update on where we stand with the uh, uh, library request. Uh, yeah, hi, Mark. Um, first, I just want to introduce who's here. Uh, Nancy Maynard couldn't make it. She had a, 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 a brief family emergency. Um, so we have Satu Zoller, who's the chair of the trustees. We have Eric Phelps, who's our fundraising consultant. We have Lauren Stara from the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, and we have Andrea Bunker also from the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. And really the, the, um, the update we sent you last week still stands. It's just, you know, with a few exceptions as far as like, you know, maybe we won't do the special election, maybe we'll just be a part of the regular election. But it seemed like there were questions when we came away on the last meeting. And so I invited the, um, the folks from the MBLC, as well as the architect and the uh, project manager from the project. And the architect and the project manager couldn't make it. They have an ongoing commitment on Wednesday nights, but they did give me some information. Um, but I just figured it would be a time to answer some of the questions that you had from last time. And, um, and I really think I'll, I'll be letting, for some of those questions, letting Lauren or Andrea speak to that. So do you, what, what, what are the questions that you have? Sure. Yeah. So in terms of the, the capital request, um, you know, capital requests can't originate with this committee. Um, they have to be brought to us and then, you know, we can, we can vote on them. So um, what we were trying to um, kind of get a sense of is like, you know, what um, the request for FY 23 would be. And, um, you know, I know that you are still early enough on that you might not have um, that, uh, that figure just yet, but um yeah, if you do have new information or if we can at least figure out like based upon some of the project parameters that won't change like the square footage and such, if we can come up with some sort of derivative of the square footage to you know, find out like if we can, you know, approximate this, um, this estimate for the, the capital request. Okay, um, I can answer that for, uh, part of that question anyway. I did talk to the architect today and he said, you know, first of all, they have to move forward to do a new estimate. Um, which takes, you know, several weeks and it costs about $25,000. And that's something that we can talk about in a few minutes um, with you guys about either having that part of um, uh, an article on the warrant for the town meeting in April or to, to be um, brought into the FY23 CIPC budget um, for the capital request. And, um, but he said at this point, because, you know, it's an estimate that's, that's, that originated in 2016, um, they don't have new numbers yet, and um, they will be doing that, you know, when they get the, the go ahead to do so. And he said, because the project is um, part renovation, like, kind of like 50-50 renovation of an existing building and then adding on new, a new expansion uh, slash new building, it's at this point, it's, it's hard for them to say without doing the new estimate, what the cost of the square, cost per square foot and therefore the total cost is. So we don't have those, we just don't know what that is yet. And we won't know until they do the new estimate. So that's that's the, the information I got from, from the architect. I don't know if Lauren or Andrea has anything more to say about that. Um, um, you know, the only thing that I can add to that is that, that I think that um, the architects are correct in that whenever you open up an old building you never know what you're going to find there are way too many unknowns in uh doing any kind of work on a historic structure so uh, i think doing a new estimate is a really good idea we can 
I don't have too many uh, estimates from, in fact, we don't have any estimates at this point from this volatile period in construction. We can talk about estimates that we've gotten from a couple of years ago or last year, but everything is all over the place. So uh, I think until um, you get a new professional estimate, you're not gonna have a good, a good number to base anything on. Andrea, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Um, I just wanted to add that we're working on a small public library pilot project right now. And with that pilot project, we are getting estimates um, for the libraries that are in the running right now for that particular grant. So we have not gotten preliminary estimates from our estimating firm right yet, but we should have more information. But it's also you know, economy of scale and then also, you know, location that can play a factor too. So really it's kind of unique to each community. Um, so and it's, I don't know and how this, this it is. Sorry, this estimate is just new construction. There's no right. renovation no, yes. involved. So we can get you a pretty decent per square foot number for new construction in the western part of the state. But the renovation is the, the big wild card in your project. Yeah, and the architect really um, and the project manager said they just because once a number gets out there in the news, uh, it'll stick. And since they don't want to have confusion for the voters in Deerfield as to, oh, the 8 million or the guess of what it could be and then the, est and the estimate, that they want to really not give any numbers until they do the estimate. Um, which will be ready if we get the approval at town meeting, they'll start working that in May, that'll be ready in August, early August. The, the problem is, um, if we spend the money for that estimate, how, how long is that estimate good for? I mean, I feel like we should go on, as you suggested, a square foot value. And then, um, then once the town is committed to it, then invest the 25,000 for a correct estimate, you know, once it's voted. I mean, I feel like we just don't have 25 million to throw out. 25,000. I mean, 25,000 to throw out and then be, be um, you know, it, it being past date or, I mean, it's really the, right now, the, the craziness. I mean, if we use a $400 per square foot, that's what we're using right now. Um, it seems to be the going um, rate for municipal construction. So if we use that and get an estimate, then that would be very helpful, I think. Um, can I just ask, is that $400 a square foot, is that for construction only or is that total project cost? Because that sounds that's total, low to me. No, that's total, total cost. That is not what we're seeing at all. We're seeing more in the neighborhood of 600. At this point. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So if we use 600, you're 600, then I think that gives us an estimate of what this would cost. And, and rather than spend the 25,000 prior to a vote, then we'll use the 600 per square foot and then, um, you know, ask for an estimate afterwards. I, if, we, if we put this in the warrant now, we can't use the money until July and then, you know, it's, it's, you know, going to be out of date by the time we have to go to town meeting. Uh, no, I, they, they would do their estimate over the summer. They wouldn't be required to be paid until August. So it would be uh, actually right up to date. Um, so they would start the process and then have it completed in August. And then that, that's when they would get the, the payment. So it would be as about up to date as you can get. And then a month after that, we'll be going to the town, the special town meeting with actual numbers. And I think it's important to give actual numbers um, at the, you know, the, at the town meeting that we'll be, you know, presenting at in September. Yeah, my, uh, um, I would not, I, I probably shouldn't have let a number come out of my mouth because uh, though that $600 for, for total square, for total project cost was pre-pandemic. You know, we don't have any good numbers for anything from this era. 
and we're in a new era. Um, I, it's, it's, I have to say it's very typical for a town to get a new estimate before they go to town meeting to vote on their construction project. It's yes, 25,000 is a lot of money, but the danger is if you get an, if you don't get an estimate and the, the number that you finally get is completely different from what you've asked the town for, it, it doesn't look, it's not the greatest Sorry, my cat is being a camera hog. Um, I'm not sure that that's the best strategy, but of course, Deerfield, you get to do whatever whatever it is that your town deems appropriate. Denise, you had your hand up? Yeah, I do. Um, so, <clears throat> so you got the $600 and I'm not sure, you know, I, th I think that probably construction prices may vary in different parts of the state. And I know that lot, uh, Greenfield is doing a new library to the tune of like 20 million, but they're building a whole new space. They're not renovating their old library. So I'm just curious, has anyone looked into what their construction cost is? Because that's more current. I have to say too, for Greenfield and for Marlboro, they both moved ahead in the fall of 2021 with their projects. And both of them came in at their estimates from the 2016-2017 grant round. At their 2017 yeah. estimate. So oh, escalation no. but what was, was the square, what was the cost per square foot though? That's my question. So we don't, so we would have to look, so this is their, their bid estimate um, or their bid. So we would have to break down that cost and see what it was. Okay. However, the market has also been volatile since that right. time too. So right. we're not sure um, where it's all going to kind of shake out. Okay. Um, you know, lumber prices have come down. I don't know if they're going to come down any further. So materials themselves and the supply chain mm -hmm. issues are impacting that. But we would have to take a look and see, you know, per square foot. We have right. not done that calculation. Normally, we don't do that until we get our final report to see what was actually expended. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I know someone up there, I could probably ask, you know, and, you know, also theirs is total new construction. There is not any renovation yeah. involved. So that right. could be different too. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. And we did account for escalation within those estimates. So there was 15%. So for what would be three years of escalation past the grant round. Um, and that is factored into our award already. So we did include that within our, our grant award to each town. And um, what are we looking at for square footage for new construction um, for our project? About 9,000. Okay. And do we know how, uh, what, what kind of square footage we have with the existing structure? Uh, about 4,300. Okay. So, um, yeah, I guess like in, in terms of uh, what you're requesting, would the request be just for um, the uh, architect's estimate or are, are, you, are you looking to request for, um, you know, the, the, the project as submitted as well? Uh, it would be both. And um, so the question is, because, you know, we're, we're going to be, if we get the, the, you know, the project voted, in, then about a year from now, or less than a year from now, we would be signing a contract and moving forward with design development. So, um, so that money would have to, to be there. Um, so that's, you know, approximately 8 million, as, you know, as far as what's, what's the estimate is now. And, um, and then, but to get to the new estimate, it, it does cost, um, you know, that 25,000. Um, what I, I guess what I, you know, what I wanted to know from, I guess, from you, Mark, is, is this something we put on the um, on the warrant separate or should it be added to the 8 million on um, the capital request? Um, I'm not sure. Um, the, the reason why I'm asking though is because, you know, we, we have to um, make a recommendation to the select board for all of the capital requests. 
Um, so we at least need to be in the ballpark, you know, for what the uh, library cost is going to be. I'm sure the architecture, um, you know, estimates probably going to be, um, yeah, that, that estimates um, a lot smaller than what the library cost is. Um, so one of the th one of the things that we're going to look at, you know, when we go to vote on it is, you know, what our what our borrowing limits are and how we're going to be able to to fund this. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, given given that we do have a finite borrowing limit, I think of what is it, thirty eight million, and you know, wastewater treatment plants already, you know, using some of that, we're going to have to figure out whether or not we can slot this in. So we need some sort of number, um, you know, for the request if we want to keep the eight to 11 million range in there as a range, or if you want the request to be eight, since the requests don't originate from this committee, it's, you know, whatever number you want us to vote on. I mean, I guess at this point, we keep it at eight. I think that I, I you know, this being a new, a whole new process for me, giving that range wasn't, wasn't the correct thing to do, having talked to the architect because we didn't have a new estimate. So really the eight million should stand <clears throat> as it has. And I think it would be really good to have Lauren or Andrea speak to, um, you know, what they, the link that I had sent you earlier today, Mark, about the, um, you know, the payments, the payment mm -hmm. structure, because even though you'll want to have eight, $8 million appropriated for the project, you're not going to be spending all of that in the first year. That's the tricky part with like municipal lending though, right? Like, yeah. you know, even though, even though like the, the total net cost, you know, for the town is going to be lower, you know, we still have to finance it. You can't, yeah. you can't, you can't sign a contract unless the money has been voted, Candace. Okay. So it has to be all in one lump sum. Okay. Yep. And, you know, you will be getting a reimbursement over five years, 20% um, from, from the state. And so if the state uh, share is about, you know, just almost about 4 million, uh, you'd be getting, you know, a million dollars. Um, no, that's not right. Whatever four, four divided by five. <laughs> Too late to do the math. Um, but you know, almost a million dollars the first year will be given back. Will be given to the town, um, and then so on for each year. So at least, at least that that and we're doing fundraising, and our fundraising goal is to raise two million plus dollars from private donations, and we're already seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars toward that goal. So that's money that would also be given to the town to offset the cost. Just to you know, keep in mind that that is helpful. Yeah, so certainly. I, yeah. I'm sorry, what? Did, speak? Did somebody want to speak? Yes, I, I wanted to, to go over the MBLC appropriation requirements and right. then the, the milestones required for each of the five uh, payments. So um, we prefer and we encourage towns to appropriate the entire, the, the total project cost at the very beginning. And the reason for that is that, you know, the, your last two payments, you're not getting them till after the building is open. So you need to make sure that you have the cash flow to keep the contractor paid during the construction. We require that you appropriate at least the eligible cost number that we have uh, from the application. And that for Deerfield is 7,373,589 dollars. So at, before you sign a contract with the MBLC for the grant, you must appropriate at least that much. So in terms of the uh, in terms of the payments, let me just let me just pull up my other spreadsheet because um, I can tell you exactly what your monthly payment or what your yearly payments are going to be. They are going to be Deerfield seven hundred and eighty eight thousand eight hundred and sixty eight dollars. Um. You'll, you will get your first payment as soon as you sign a contract with us. So as soon as you, you appropriate the money, you say, yes, we're going to accept this grant. You provide us that, that evidence that you've appropriated the local funding. You can sign a contract with us and get that first 
$8,000. Second payment you get when uh, the construction documents are completed and they have been accepted and approved by the MBLC. Always assuming that that is in the next fiscal year because we can't guarantee you any more than one payment per fiscal year. The third payment is when you sign a contract with a general contractor and get your building permit. The fourth payment is when the building is open to the public. And the fifth payment is uh, after you uh, close out the construction contract, all the financials are done and um, you do the final report. Okay, thank you. No more than one payment per year. That is what we can guarantee you. Now, there have been many instances where we have money left over at the end of the fiscal year and we have to spend it somewhere and we may give you some extra money. So it's not out of the question that you would get more than one payment, but one payment per fiscal year is what we can promise you. Okay, great. Candace, if I could just make a clarification that uh, might be useful in this context, which is of the funds that have been pledged and committed, so that 700-ish thousand, some of those are pledges that would also be paid over time. And as we are continuing to do fundraising, we would expect that there would be some folks are making commitments for three years. So we would give you a detailed rundown of that reimbursement to the town as well. But just to let, I mean, when folks are making $100,000 commitments, they're often not doing those in $100,000 lump sums. But they still have a pledge. We would have pledge cards on file. The default rate on pledges for a capital campaign is less than 3%. So just a piece of information, most people do not want their name on a building that they didn't help actually fund. Thanks, Eric. So one of the questions that came up last time was about ARPA funding, um, because I had had a meeting earlier that day with Andrea, and we talked about that, and um, and I brought it up at the, the last meeting with, with I think it was a joint meeting with CIPC and Select Board, um, and there was um, a request for me to look into that, and I guess that the ARPA fund that we did, uh, ARPA money that we did receive already that each town was allotted, 50% um, came last summer and then another 50% will be coming within 12 months. So I guess this this coming summer. And I, I did reach out to someone at the DSL, Division of Local Services uh, today. And I said, is there additional ARPA funding um, that we can apply for? And he he didn't really respond. He said, this is, this is what we know. This is what you know all the towns have gotten. So I don't know where the library fits in with that. If that money is already being planned to be spent um, some, somewhere else or if that can be put towards the library project. But there, I guess what I'm saying is there's no further ARPA funding application to, um, to go towards at this time. Okay. All right, Denise, your hand up. So I know, you know, you said, and I think it was Andrew that said, I forget who said, oh, Lauren, who said it was $600 a square foot. I don't, I'd like to know when that was. And I'll, I'm also curious, I did quick math. So if you do 600 times, you know, 1400, 145 comes out to 8,700. If you do the same square footage times 700 square foot, it comes out to um, 10 million 150 thousand if you do it times 800 a square foot it comes out to 11 million 600 so I'm not sure whether I feel comfortable with it with the 800 be unless I know how much is how much square footage because that's that's a huge disparity between 8 million and 11 million you know that's a, that's a lot of money so I mean, I think that would be helpful to know yeah that's something that we won't know until the architect does their new estimate there's just no way to know. Unfor you know, unfortunately. 
-hmm. Are you talking about the square footage of the building or are you talking about price per square foot? Price per square foot. Okay. So I mean, if there's anything that's currently happening, for instance, I, you know, I'll see if I can check into Greenville and see and say, hey, how much is it going to cost you per square foot? I mean, I, th I think that would be good to find something current in the well, same area that we live in. So the estimate, I mean, <clears throat> will all you would do is divide that, right? So and that would give you your cost per square foot. So the right. the but the estimate, because um, the square footage is not going to be reduced. Right, so the square footage is staying right. the same, and so that will give you your your estimated project yeah. cost. I did the whole thing. I did fourteen thousand five hundred square feet, and that is the new construction and also renovating the old construction because sometimes that's just as costly. So I used that figure, and I did it times six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred. So you know, just to get a roundabout figure. So I'm thinking that eight million still seems very low. Really the square footage are, of the new building is about 9,000. Right, but then I'm including the old building too. The I'm old not... building, it, the old, that does include the old building. Yeah. Oh, it, so are you talking about a total of 9,000 for the old yeah. and the new? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the total understood. finished building, yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. I, in, my, in my spreadsheet, when from the application, the square footage that the application was based on was 12,700 something. Oh, that's funny because I looked over the application a couple of days ago. And I don't know if I looked in the wrong place, but it was about 9,000. The, the two numbers that you gave us, Candace, okay, yeah, the, the two numbers that you gave us would add up to roughly 12,000. Okay, so we're talking 12,000. Yeah, 12,784 is what was in the application. Okay. okay, I must have looked at the wrong place. I just looked at over the other day, again, the construction grant application. Okay. Um, and it could have been broken down into renovated and new, and that might have been where that came from. And I'm really sorry. I'm at a hockey rink because my wife just had a playoff game for the game she coached, the team she coaches. So that's why you're seeing all this behind me. So I apologize. <laughs> yeah, because it's interesting because I know that with the current, you know, whenever um, I hear the trustees that have been involved, you know, um, with the project all along talk about the square footage, it's kind of like it's almost like double. So it's strange to me that if our current square footage is 4,300, that it would go, that it it's going to a complete square footage of 12,500, which is some, um, seems high to me. That number seems to jibe with the architect emails that I saw way back working with y'all. Okay. I guess yeah. I, was, I just read the wrong. And there's, well, there's also gross square footage and net square footage. So gross square footage includes all the way to the exterior corners of your building. Okay. And then the net is your usable space. Okay. So that could also be the difference there is that you have around 3000 square feet of gross that doesn't actually compute into your net. Okay. So that's a possibility as well. Okay. Good. Gargoyle to gargoyle, as they say in commercial yes. real estate. I don't yes. think we have gargoyles <laughs> on the library, but that's how they do it in commercial. Yeah. So well, just ahead. one more, one more piece of information. I just did a very quick calculation for the information that we had from the Greenfield application from their estimated total project cost from the application divided by the square footage from the application. It came out to seven hundred and eighty-two dollars a square foot. That doesn't mean that's what Deerfield is going to cost, but that's the number that you wanted, and that's you. that's what it is. Okay. Can I ask what the total amount Greenfield got was? Because their library cost nineteen point nine million is what the bid came back at. I'm sorry, I didn't understand that question. Can you say it again? So their original application, I'm wondering how much the actual amount they put in for was. How many million dollars? Oh, it was 20,959,000. Yep, so it's roughly accurate. Good. So the 784 is accurate. 782. Okay, yeah, that would put us at just shy of 10 million. But you know, it's it's so hard because between now and when we get the in August when we get the the new estimate, it could go up or down. Right. 
oh, who knows, but, you know, and I, and, I, and the architect and the project manager just sort of like, I think from a marketing standpoint, really want to make sure we don't have too many different numbers floating out there because it'll just be confusing. Um, you know, so I guess if you are going to take the, the price per square foot that Lauren gave you as, um, as kind of like a, a base to, to plan for, if, um, it just makes me a little nervous because if we're saying it's about 10 million and then we actually come in at you know eight or 9 million after all, um, I just hope that it wouldn't, um, yeah, be bad. People would be happy, Candace. <laughs> What's that? People would be very happy That's if it true. came in under true. budget. I think the other important piece though too is that Greenfield is larger. So that economy of scale that, you know, when you're building a larger building, that price per square foot might actually be lower. So I think that is, so just to throw that out there, because I think it's important to be as accurate as possible um, with, an, with whatever figure gets out into the public sphere, because they are going to remember that figure and that's a really important important piece and projects can either you know, prevail or fail um, based on that. Yeah, that, that makes sense. It, you know, I know a lot of the cost goes into making the four corners, um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we were doing a sanity check on, on, on that range that we were given. Um, so I, I appreciate everyone's input there. I ask a question quickly. Sure. Um, what is Deerfield looking at in terms of a timeline for approving the project? Do you have a fall town meeting or what was your? It will be a, a special uh, town meeting, but okay. historic, historically um, there's been, uh, for the past 10 years, every year, there has been a special town meeting in September. So we're kind okay. of hoping that will be the case so we can kind of, you know, hitch our wagon onto that. But if not, we would still have a special town meeting in September. Thank you. Yeah. All right, does anyone else have any other questions? Nope. Okay. So what are our next steps for with, with you, Mark? Well, um, what, what we're gonna do is, um, you know, vote on the, um, on the figure. So I guess, um, you know, that was actually gonna kind of be my, my last question is, you know, if, if there was a specific number or if you wanted to, to have a range that you would like us to vote on. Um, and then, you know, what it ends up happening is these um, capital requests, we, um, uh, we vote on and prioritize. And then um, what we'll be doing is making our recommendations to the select board. So um, this capital request um, that you have, um, this committee is the first of, of, of many, you know, stops for it. Okay. Um, so um, it'll, it'll then go to the select board and then um, the finance committee as well. So we're, you know, it just, it, our, our vote isn't gonna necessarily, you know, push it through or stop it either. Um, so yeah, um, but to answer your question, then the next stop is gonna be the select board. Okay. Now, since I, I would like to stick with the 8 million, should I submit a, a, a new request to you? Would you just like to have a clean request? As opposed um, to the one with the range? I would almost want to defer to Casey on that. Um, she's the one that's handling the request. But I mean, we could, if you want us to vote on 8 million, we can, we can have the vote on 8 million. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of paperwork, um, I'll defer to Casey. Okay. Hi, I was helping. I was helping um, Chris Miller get on the meeting while you guys oh, were sure. talking. Yeah, I appreciate you teeing that up. He's next. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say that what she could, what you could do, Candace, is revise your request and just change the numbers, and just put. And I almost sent it to you because I was waiting to see Mark where Mark was going to go with this. So take your take your word doc and just save it as revised and correct what you need to correct. Okay. And should I add the twenty five thousand to that for the architect? um estimate fee um i i would probably say to put it in as a separate request and then so, we'll vote on them separately yeah okay both will go to you to, to uh, your so yeah the casey and then our committee will vote on both yeah okay. all right 
Thank you. You're welcome. Can I ask a question. Sure. I got in here a little bit late. What was the object for the eight million dollars that you're talking about? That would be for um, in investments in the library. Oh, okay. Okay. The building and the repairs and everything. Yep. To both um, add on to the library with a new structure and then also renovate the existing structure. Just uh, where supposedly is the money going to come from? This $8 million. Um, do you want to elaborate on that, Candace? Yeah, I mean, um, half of half of that, that's, that was the original estimate of the cost. And so when we applied for a grant from the state, and so um, the grant would pay for half of that, half of that estimate. So about, about 4 million, about, about 39, uh, 3.9 million. And then the library is also um, committing to raising uh, another $2 million from private donations. Um, and then, um, also because we, the building is being renovated, we, will, we could get some um, historical uh, preservation funds for that. So really then at this point, it's all smoke and mirrors and there's no actual number that it's going to cost the townspeople of Deerfield. Well, because the building, um, you know, is still being, um, it's it's still, you know, it hasn't been designed. It hasn't been like gone through design development yet. So, um, so we'll get a new estimate from the architects this summer of what they what they think it could cost now uh, compared to what they estimated in two thousand sixteen. Somewhere I seem to remember that the architect's cost is a 10% of what the overall budget is going to be. Is that inaccurate? Um, I don't know. I don't have that number in front of me. That is a typical cost for the architects on our public projects. It's a typical 10% uh, around there. Okay, so we're still we're still guessing as far as what the bottom line's going to be. I suppose so. I mean, you know, it's 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 always been an estimate, um, and you know, it just all depends on when they do the new estimate this year, this summer. You know, where construction costs are at. Um, so, yeah, we did mention earlier that the two projects that move forward in the fall of twenty twenty one came in at or just below their estimates from 2016, 2017. So we're not sure where it is right now with the volatility in the market, but um, our past two projects have come in at that estimate, which has included escalation cost within that, the 15%. I, I guess what my concern here with these capital expenses is at this point, I'm retired, I'm on a fixed income. And I watched my taxes go up in this town for the last 48 years. And in old Deerfield, I haven't really seen anything um, coming this way. So I'm kind of wondering about these expenses that we're doing for improvements to the base structure, but nothing's getting done on the, the rest of it, like the roads in old Deerfield that no longer get taken care of because it's all school territory. That's all. I just, it's an ax to grind, but this I guess is not the forum to do it. All right, yeah, uh, thank you for the comment. Um, all right, uh, does anyone else have any other questions uh, regarding the library? All right. Well, thank you very much for coming. I, I really appreciate it, uh, everyone. Um, I know it's kind of, kind of tough to get everyone um, in the same place at the same time. So I, I really appreciate you coming in and adding some clarity for us. Great. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I guess we will uh, move on next to public works um, capital projects if we've got uh, um, a representative from public works here. Do we have anyone yet? Can I just quickly mention that um, uh, I am happy to answer questions from anyone about the state's role in the Deerfield uh, Library Project. Feel free to contact me directly. 
if you have any questions. Great. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Mark? Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Chris Miller is here and he can speak to the public works projects. Chris, I have a scan of all the project requests, so I'm happy to show them while you're talking if you want me to. Sure. Um, just let me know where you want to start and everybody, he may have, have his documents in a different order than I do. So I'll just pull it up and if you want me to screen share, just let me know. Okay, okay great. All right, it's all you, Chris. Okay, let's go. Uh, first, we're looking at the X mark mower. We took that off of uh, the capital planning projects and uh, put that in, into our operating budget. So that'll be taken off of the capital planning projects as of last night. Um, mini excavator is something that I would like to put on this year. Um, we have several culvert projects and a um, bunch of jet side things that we wanted to clean up, um, especially like around Wapping Road and areas like that around the Candy Kitchen. Um, we're going for a bundle intent um, certificate for uh, the DEP, so we will be allowed to go into the ditches. Uh, year round to maintain them. Um, something that a, a mini is uh, definitely needed for. Um, not to mention, I mean, you see your asphalt sidewalk repairs. Um, that's something that we're trying to plan on starting um, as well this year, probably later in the summer when the, the ditch work and that type of stuff is gonna be done. Um, so that 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 piece of equipment would be very implemented, implemental for for our our department. Um, any comments? Anything? Feedback? Mark, you're muted. Okay. Mark, you were muted that whole time. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, yeah, um, I, I'm uh, just trying to track with um, the, uh, um, the the actual request forms. So for this mini excavator, um, you said that you were looking for a Cat 306? Uh, yeah, something in that range. Okay. 305, 306, 307, it's right in that small mini excavator range. Mark, can I speak about this for a second? Uh, sure. So John Pachork, I'm a resident, also the chief of police. Um, should the capital committee uh, look at this in depth this year, I would support it. Uh, one of the things I did talk to Chris about was a possible five-year lease to own program where the possibility of us paying $20,000, $21,000 a year. And at the end of five years, we would own it outright. Um, Chris and I did talk about sidewalks, both in Old Deerfield and downtown. Uh, Chris is aware that there was money sitting there to pave the sidewalks, and Chris has agreed to take on the task with the highway department of starting to tear those out and prep them, and then we will call in a professional company to pave them, which will ultimately save the town, in the end, hundreds of thousands of dollars of hiring a contractor and engineer to come in and do the projects as a whole. So last year, we allocated about $250,000 at town meeting to do the sidewalks. By the last projections that Kevin gave me, that's more than enough to do South Deerfield and Old Deerfield sidewalks other than the concrete downtown. So in total, by the numbers I had previously, it would be roughly about $170,000 worth of paving to do the, the sidewalks 100% other than the concrete. The mini excavator would give them the range that I didn't even understand until I ran into Brian Chiz, the operator. So when you're operating the backhoe, you know, and I'm not an operator, so I didn't understand this, that when you're digging, you can only move this stuff so far because you're limited by the range 
of the backhoe where the mini excavator, you're obviously able to turn 360 degrees. So it is a big world of difference. One thing that I would ask, uh, I think Chuck probably spec this out is maybe Chris to go back with Chuck and ask, can we do a five-year lease to own program where we're paying 20, 21, $22,000 a year. And at the end of the five years, we own it outright. So it's similar, similar to what uh, we did with the uh, Wacker Deuce and the loader for the sidewalk. Yes. Yeah. And that way, if, uh, if somebody doesn't see the productivity and they, they don't see the use of it, then they can always say, okay, let's turn it in. But I think that Chris is a obvious person of his word. And uh, I think this is the year that we should proceed forward. We don't have a lot of money. And that's why I bring up the five-year lease to own program. Uh, Casey, you had a question? Actually, John's right. We do. We actually have that estimate. It's about 22,000, John, to do a five-year um, lease. Oh, great. So it would be similar to the transition that we did last year when we when we decided to get the at least the Wacker Newsom in terms of cost. Thank you. I have a question, John. Um, the sidewalks in, in Old Deerfield, are those the ones downtown? Yes, sir. Yeah. Is Deerfield Academy and all the nonprofits kicking money into this project? So DA has agreed to help us rip the sidewalks out and prep them. And I've not talked to them about funding for paving them, but we certainly can entertain that with them as well. I'm more than happy to bring that up to them. How about uh, the situation you've got on Pine Nook Road where all the people go up to Eagle Brook from Deerfield and back and forth where they're always walking in the road? Has that issue been addressed at all? Yeah, Kevin and I actually were entertaining um, a meeting with Eagle Brook and hiring an engineer. We were actually asking them to um hire an engineer to look at restructuring that whole road while addressing the infrastructure first so what i mean by that is the water in the sewer so we don't have to rip up a brand new road and then do we actually put in some type of retaining wall through there push the road over a tad bit and put a five or six foot wide sidewalk because you and i know the kids are constantly up and down that road so yeah, think, not only that but the the drains have not been dug out under the bridge in seven years. Absolutely. No, I totally agree with you. So um, getting that holistic approach, I think is key. And last I knew, Eric Malloy up there was very receptive to it. And unfortunately, Kevin's just not been with us the last 10 or 12 weeks. So we kind of just dropped that a little bit. I think we've got to jump back on that. But I really want to make sure that we address the infrastructure first before all of a sudden we repave a road and then we tear the damn thing up. Because that's just waste of money yeah the water department has dug up that up that hill all the way up to the new tank i think about five times in the last seven years <laughs> yeah no, we just we need to do it once we need to do it right and it'd be done for 30 years again okay yeah so we are we are absolutely entertaining that discussion with them and andy chase was very positive about it i actually described antique street lights going up the hill to him with uh, a five or six but wide sidewalk along the, the small stream side and pushing that bank over a little bit with some retaining walls and, and updated drainage. And yeah, I mean, it would look gorgeous. Yeah. But like I told him, we get $300,000 a year in chapter 90 money. That's going to be a $3 million project. That's money we don't have. So they're looking okay. at redoing the dining hall up there, but I want to come in with a five-year plan exactly. with them where they can factor it in and they can address it with us at the same time. Yeah, under the table, I heard that they've got a $100 million building project going to start up there pretty quick. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I know they're redoing the dining hall, but I don't have any estimates yet. That was uh, under the table. This is what's going to happen. Gotcha. You're probably in the loop more than me. The, um, the other question that I had that just flew right out of my mind. By the way, my name is John Rutka. I live up here on County Road. I know you, John. I also wondered about um, the trees that have been continually coming down here. And I, some of them are still marked from where Milt Williams was tree warden. Um, they got marked to take down and then they fell down on themselves. Okay. Will that be factored in? 
when you start doing the engineering diagram and, and assessment? Well, I think we have to because the only way to truly engineer a road with proper drainage is to remove the shade from it. So you're not dealing with the icing. So for me, you got to go all the way through. Um, the other question that just popped back in was the tractor trailers going up to the school. They can't make um, it under the me, bridge. Are, are we gonna, let's get back to um, the cat. Yeah, um, I have the, uh, all those salting and that kind of stuff. I mean, I this is way off the subject. Right. Uh, yeah. Sorry. So Okay. Yeah, I'd like to get, uh, just go, go through the capital requests. Um, if we've got public comment that, you know, pertains directly yeah. to a, a My bad, I just, then, first yeah. time here, wasn't uh, sure what the format was. Oh, it's okay, yep. Uh, Denise, you had a question? I just have a question. What's the useful lifetime of the of this piece of equipment? I would say 15, 20 years without a problem. Okay, thank you. Okay. Who's the distributor for the piece of equipment now? Cap. Out of where? Schmidt equipment, or either that or it'll be up in uh, Long Meadow. All right, uh, let's get back to it. Um, what was the next item on the uh, on, 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 in, on your 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 packet, or, or we can go and I I think uh, like Casey was saying, I we we may be following in different order here. I think the the next thing I had was a, a John Deere loader. Yeah, the John Deere loader. Um, we would we would push off for another year at least. Okay, all right. So that's gonna be what a FY24 request? Uh, yeah, let's let's try that. Okay, all right. Uh, the next thing I have on my list is, uh, give me a moment here, lots of, lots of paperwork to scroll through. Okay. Um, you've got the rider mower, which I think you said that we were gonna move to an operating budget. Is, yes. that, is that correct? Yep. yep. Okay. Um, and then the next thing I have is the mini excavator we just talked about. Yep. And the next one here is uh, a equipment replacement for a brush wood chipper. Yeah. Uh, Casey's scrolling faster than I am. Thank you, Casey. Yeah. Um, the existing wood chipper we have right now is at 1997. Um, it has a few large issues, not to mention a couple of safety issues. Um, it's a piece of equipment that we use constantly, um, um, yearly. I mean, weather uh, disasters and uh, any type of uh, fallen trees. Um, and like I said, there's a, there's a couple of safety issues as far as it uh, not stopping when it's supposed to and um, um, there's a, a, a pull cord that's supposed to be, if for some reason someone gets inside the chute, there should be a pull cord there. This one does not have that. Um, and again, like I said, it's a 1997. So you're going on, who are we talking here? You're talking uh, 25 years old. Okay, and then for that one, we wanna do that in 2023? Correct. That's a safety issue, Mark. So when we talked about it internally, we thought he should probably give you the outline of what could go wrong. Oh yeah, I've, I've used wood chippers before. This one sounds like a lot of fun. Um, yeah. No wood chippers fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then the next one's a building replacement. That's the um, shed up at the uh, uh, transfer station. Okay. Um, I mean, if that could be put into something else besides capital planning, I mean, a fifteen thousand um, dollars could it go another year? Yes, it's a very, very small, rickety shed, as most people can see. Um, during our COVID, uh, we couldn't even have two people inside the building at the same time because it's such a a small building. Um, so, I mean, it could probably last another year. But uh, that would be definitely it. Okay. I mean, that thing is uh, the floor is starting to fall apart. Um, the deck around it is starting to fall apart. Uh, I mean, if there's a, a different way to fund it, you know, through transfer station budget or something like that, I have that. But um, it's definitely going to need to be done next year. All right. 
Chris, is it structurally deficient or does it just need new flooring? It needs a new floor, John. Gotcha. I mean, it holds the heat. You know, it's not like it's, uh, you know, put your finger through the wall type of deal. But uh, another year, you're going to get to that point pretty quick. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, the floor is looking pretty rickety. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next thing we have here is the building HVAC software. Yes. Um, that software is outdated um basically same thing with john's building uh, you get days that uh, the temperatures just vary and go up and down it's not um uh, it's not economical at this point i think that uh i think we'd be wasting money if we continued with the same one that we have All right. Um, I, I, oh, sorry. Yeah. Right. I add one thing to that. In our internal discussion, one of the things that we thought might be useful for folks to know about this particular this particular project is if we can fix fix the the software, it's going to regulate the building temperatures much better and could conceivably save us some money. So that's an element that makes sense for somewhere in the neighborhood of, I don't know, so right now he's got it priced for $10,000, even if it was a couple thousand dollars more than that, that's still, I think, a useful ask because that's a big building and they are, that's, a, that's also optimally a 24-7 operation. So this is a good place to, to think about where you put your money. Yeah, that makes sense, trading a capital expenditure for an opera, uh, or, yeah. CapEx for OpEx, yeah. Makes well, sense. it relates to a building, so that's the reason it's here. That's also why transfer station is here because the bylaw requires any modification to a building or yep. consideration of a building to be addressed by capital. But in this case, I think it's good. It's a good bang for your buck if we can find a way to fund it. Okay, great, uh, John. I think you had your hand up for public comment. Uh, just a quick question. All right, ten grand for the software. What's the condition of the hardware that it's going to run on age-wise and will it be able to run it and up with an upgrade from what i'm told it's 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 adaptable definitely adaptable with the, what we have right now all right yeah it's been looked into pretty thorough just to clarify this is for the highway garage chris correct correct yes yeah, so it's the new building. Right. All right. And I have one more thing just sure. to, to put on, in, on the burner or in your heads. Um, the uh, truck, okay, the Freightliner 2004 replaced vehicle, mm -hmm. 325000 So that is something that if I order that truck right now, I will not have it for probably 14 to 16 months. Is this the FL70? This is the Freightliner truck. Do you see that? Oh, that one there, okay. 325,000, I'm just saying that's for 2024. Yeah. But what I'm saying is for me to have that for the 2024 snow season, 2025 snow season, um, I need to order that fairly soon. So, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm just wondering if I should order this or am I gonna wait till I get approval next year and then wait another 14 months and a possible 15 to 20% increase in the cost on top of that. Okay. So Mark, John could actually speak to this as well because he's, he's facing similar delays. They're really equipment and supply chain delays, but he's definitely facing them. Why don't you tell him what your situation is with your truck, John? 
Uh, our hybrid cruisers are running 10 to 14 months out. We ordered one probably last March or April, anticipating that it would pass in June without an issue. And uh, the car arrived at MHQ to have the police equipment installed about two weeks ago. And now they're backed up six or eight weeks. I'm looking at probably getting that car just in time for town meeting to basically look bad because I got a brand new cruiser. And then I've got another one on the warrant. So yeah, I mean, equipment's running 12 to 14 months. We're all trying to adapt to this new COVID world and it's, uh, it's not pretty. So to yeah, Chris's point, maybe we should it. consider for a fall special. So Chris, we often do a special in the fall. Yep. Maybe it's worthwhile considering this for a fall. Okay. Yeah, I'll go what do you, it, I think it, we could definitely what I would suggest you do is maybe get Diane to help you put the application together, the request form. Yeah. She should have it if she doesn't, Jennifer or I can send it to you. But I think if you put it in and they have it on their radar screen, or if we make that change from 24 to 23, then at least it's on everybody's radar screen. Right now, what you're seeing was a carry forward because it was in their equipment plan. So maybe we just do a quick adjustment on that one because I don't think they've seen that capital request form yet, Chris. Okay. So that's just a suggestion from an administrative perspective because if it's in, regardless of when it comes in, if you're thinking maybe we should think about this because of delays for FY, once we get to a special in the fall, having that application in front of them is gonna help them make quicker decisions on it. Okay. And there's no reason you couldn't supply it now and we could consider it as a fall. They, okay. The Capital Improvement Planning Committee's done that before. Okay, I mean, I do have a request form in front of me for that, actually. Oh, great. For that machine. Cool. Politically, you just have to be very careful addressing capital items in the fall. The residents throw a fit when you put any high-priced item on for a fall special town meeting. We've got pushback every single time we've ever done it. And I'm not even sure the select board would probably be okay with it, but I may be wrong. Casey probably has a better pulse on them than me. The reason I say it is I don't know. So with him pushing the loader off a year, if we reposition the freight liner, which they could do if they see an application capital could consider repositioning it. Um, I don't know how much we can absorb because we all know that this is going to be a tough budget year, but we say that every year. Um, so if you want to, if the if the planning committee wants to do that, as long as we get them an application, Chris, they can consider it on whatever level they want to consider it. John's not wrong. It's just it's the supply chain issue on top of the funding issues. Correct. Yeah. 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 The only thing you can do, Chris, is check with the vendor and see if you can order it. And if by any meeting, uh, any means town meeting rejects it, if you're obligated to buy it or if they can just resell it to another town. Because most of the time they'll tell you these things are like hot fire. Like we can resell that truck in one second. So if you want us to order, we'll order it. And you're not committed to it. Yeah, that's a good point. I know I can do the cabin chassis without, without any problem. You know, it's just a... Uh... The other things that go with it which every town's going to want the same stuff basically anyway so that's probably a very true point yeah if you can do that i'd order it right away honestly yeah okay and then you people will be nice to me next year definitely right <laughs> just because they're nice doesn't mean they're gonna say yes i know it. <laughs> Okay, I think that's all I got. All right, well, thank you very much for uh, coming in and giving us uh, some additional info. That's no this problem. really helpful. Yeah. Thank really you. Um, okay, so the next thing we had in our agenda here was to um, you know, start talking about um, the capital schedule. Um, since we don't really have a quorum now, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of inclined to push that off until we can meet again. Um, the last thing we can at least look at, I think, um, is this uh, APR request. Um, so let's see. Just going to pull that up. I hadn't actually put that in the schedule yet. 
but what oh, I was considering, okay. no, I sent out the APR application, the CIPC application, because the select board received this request for a match for APR land. And really that's, it's because it's a, if Carolyn was here, she could explain it a little bit better, but when there's an APR restriction, the town has a stake in that land. So it's been considered in the past a, a land purchase essentially which means it has to go through capital. It has to go to CPC for funding because that's the general match, community preservation funds. That's yep. the general match source. So what I did was Tim Hilchey did the CPC application and I did the CIPC application. So I was gonna put it into land purchases. I just hadn't gotten there. I've had meetings all day. So while you guys talk, if you wanna talk through it, I can stop screen sharing um, and you guys can talk about it and I can just throw it in while you're talking. Sure, yeah, so uh, it looks like we have a request here um, for um, uh, APR to the tune of uh, 11K. Um, so um, I know normally, normally we kind of talk about these and then you know, make a recommendation right away, but we don't have enough people here to do that. But yeah, it, it looks like we've got one coming in um, for 12.4 uh, acre parcel. So we'll have to add that in the next. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. To look at that. So where is that exactly? Let me see if. Um, Let me see if I can pull it up. I don't have an address for it, but um, it, it it's on behalf of Chester Ostrowski. Yeah. That places it for you. It's about twelve and a half, just shy of twelve and a half acres, mm -hmm. Denise. And let me see if I can quick pull it up for you. Give me a sec. This is why I do things in the office. So everything is on this computer. Oh, here we go. It's on Conway Road and South Mill River Road. South Mill. So it's Chet. It's I know exactly where it is. He has cows on that land. Okay, um, I just can't tell you like where it is because my brain doesn't work that quickly. Yeah, last year we did one and that was on South Mill River also. And I think it was yes. approximately the same amount of acreage. So, okay. Yeah, no, that's- and It was around the same, the same amount too. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, no, that's, that's good info, thanks. So it, let me show you the aerial on it. Hold on a second. While it tells me what I can show you, because it just loves me so much. <laughs> okay, so this is the aerial. John, am I looking at, so this is the space we're talking about. I just can't tell which side is which, which side is South Mill and which side is 116. But it's a right, fairly right large part. Your screen is 116 on the left is South Mill River. Okay. So this is a parcel you're looking at. Mm -hmm. The the offer letter, I included that in the packet. When I sent you all a packet, I sent you an email with an attachment that had th some of this information. Um, what this is, this started last year, but the APR process is fairly slow. So they just finalized an offer letter to the Ostrowskis mentioning the fact that they asked for a local match. And what they did for the local match was most towns are required to give a 10% match, but if you're a right to farm community, you can lower that by 5%. So the $11,000 represents 5% of the offer to the Ostrowskis. And that I think is of $220,000, if I recall correctly. Um, yep. Quick check. Yeah, so 5% of that. So their offer, or the, I'm sorry, it's, yeah, the whole value would be 220,000. The landowner has accepted an offer from APR for 209. So that 11 basically is the difference between the, the total offer price of 220. So this came through, like I said, a few days ago, officially, we had asked them back in October to give us an idea of whether whether this was coming up. Thanks, John. Um, so I had made a couple of other corrections in the spreadsheet, but this, I wanted to get it out so that we had, this happened to us last year, but it happened much closer to town meeting. 
So I wanted to try to get it out to you guys as soon as I could. The select board will probably discuss this next week. So what we did was administratively, we just shot everything out to different committees so that they could be on the same page by a certain time. <laughs> All right, that makes sense. Well, yeah, we'll have to add it to the uh, next meeting's agenda, unfortunately, but. And so one thing you should know is if we, when Tim Hilty was doing the application, they would t the intent would probably be to take this money out of prospective 2023 um, Community Preservation Act fund revenues, like we did with the Fisk land that we did last year. Okay. So it wouldn't have a net effect. It has an effect on the CPC funding. And frankly, I think they would approve it. I think the board's going to be very um, interested in approving it as well. They like to see land preservation. And this is a parcel that we watched for a while. All right. Okay, well, um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, just trying to think here. We uh, So in terms of, um, you know, our recommendations and everything, we're, we're gonna have to, I think, kind of be done with everything by March 16th. So we're gonna to need to get another meeting scheduled. Um, I guess I'm disinclined to do that right now, um, unless um, Denise, if you and I just wanna pick a time that works for us and make everyone else. I have a question, what happened to Carol and what happened to Skip? I don't know what happened to Skip. I know what happened to Carolyn. <laughs> yeah. She's probably still at the school committee meeting. Oh, okay, because she said she might be late. So I, I yeah, okay. Yep. Okay. That's fine. So do you want to do an email request, Mark? Because yep. when you're scheduling a meeting, you can talk to each other. Okay. It's just you can't talk outside yeah, open yeah. meeting if you're talking yeah. about any other subject. <laughs> well, we've got two skips who aren't here, and we also have Ken Cutterback, and he wasn't at the last meeting. No, no, I talked to Ken about this yesterday. So he okay. asked me if I had been sending him the notification emails, and I have. Okay. He needs a lot of times this conflicts with elementary school business because he's oh, on the, the school committee. Okay. Okay. So I asked him, we were on another subject, but I checked because I had had that same question. Is he getting my emails? Yeah. So he is getting my emails. Um, what might be useful is to actually send an email out, Mark, and have them or a doodle poll and have everybody pick a time because mm -hmm. what Mark's is really letting everyone know is we know we have to score, have to wind up to give the select board enough time to hold a hearing and get firm numbers into finance committee because finance committee wants to know as well yeah so there is one other ask that came up and you can slap me upside the head mark but i want to let people know because i just sent this out um i received it this afternoon so frs has asked for a portion of the cost of a $75,000 walk-in cooler to replace the one that they have now, which I think failed, but don't quote me. Shelly sent me something a couple weeks ago about it. So the cost to Deerfield would be 31,283 rounded up. Okay. And they want us to put a separate article on, but I want you guys to be aware of it yep. because it is, it is materially within the bounds of the bylaw. Okay. John, you're the only one that actually would slap me upside the head. <laughs> All good. Things happen. Don't do that. Hey, Mark, can you can you send a revised spreadsheet too? Please. I know Casey, you were you were revising things like uh, and I'm sorry, did I miss something? Did I know No, you didn't. It's I was revising it and then when FR I was in the middle of trying to send it and then FRS came up and I went. Oh, okay. No, no, no. That's so fine. it's pretty much revised to the place I think it needs to be, okay. except for the conversation between Chris and everyone about the freight liner question. Yep. So the thing I can do about that is put a note in, but he has to send us the application. So once he does, I can pass it out to you guys. I can send you the, this draft as of today, if that works. Yeah, that would work. And then um, I, I think that, you know, you said that we're going to be taking the mower out of the operating or the mower out. I took that out already. That's going to go in the operating budget. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Yep. Thank you. 
So I'll date it as of today after this meeting and try to remember to put a note about the Freightliner. But I just think everybody needs to be on the same page. So that's why I want him to send us the application so y'all can see it. Yeah. Sure. The only thing okay. the Capital Committee used to do years ago that I'd like to get back in that habit of, and, and obviously I'm not a member, is viewing the equipment that's being replaced. So you can get a firsthand perspective. We used to actually schedule. Physically go out. Oh, yeah. Physically go out and look at the equipment. Yeah, yep. they did that years ago. Wow, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, you yeah, basically I mean, just have them bring it to a meeting. You walk out the back of town hall and you walk around the piece of the equipment okay. and go, okay, it actually is junk. It needs to be replaced. Yeah. Or I appreciate it's on your replacement schedule, but you know what? This thing still looks brand new and it's got 17,000 miles on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so, a great uh, idea. Discrepancies at times, we will say. So if you want to do that, we would just need to schedule it with Chris. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, we would want to do that. If you want to do it at the next meeting, we would want to do that. You guys are doing remote. So, you know, it may be a question of figuring that out individually. Well, the mini excavator, um, you know, that one, that one's yet to be purchased. I don't think there's anything that that's going to replace. Um, you know, the, the loader, um, you know, that, that makes sense. The wood chipper from 1997, we've, you know, I, I, I see the shit every time I go to you know, the transfer station. Right. Uh, yeah, right. So I, that's a great suggestion though, John. Yeah. Um, I'll definitely, um, take that into account if, uh, if there's anything else that comes up, uh, just to take a look at it. Cause you're right. I mean, um, you get the visual. We, yeah. We should probably, you know, take a look, um, with with all the other capital requests that we have you know we have to prioritize these so yeah so one the thing was just fully rebuilt internally and externally and painted like four years ago that's why oh, it was oh okay yeah so you know safety wise i absolutely get it i fully support them but i want to be realistic with everything we do the loader is still like new and that's what he said to me i was gonna i was about to say that next year the, absolutely not 10 years we'll consider the thing about the loader is it doesn't get as much work it doesn't it doesn't have as much, many hours because it doesn't work as hard as the other one the one that's actually at the garage oh so we used to have one and that when we replaced that one about 10 years ago we got a brand new one we took that old one and we left it at the dump mark so i don't want you any disservice going the one at the dump is the new one because it's not it's not okay yeah and so from a safety perspective it might be more useful to consider and this this is what happened last year to consider maybe putting a lease into their operating budget for the mini yeah if we can't do that purchase um and if it really is a safety and i don't know john i've never seen the wood chipper um, but it, it's basically shifting the eggs in the basket around. Yeah. yeah. It, does, it does need to be replaced in the near future. Yep. It is a safety issue. I, I know from firsthand experience using wood chipper that having a, having a feature to, to, to stop it, uh, when you're getting a little too close is, is, uh, I, I had a little bit of run in with, um, some, uh, some bittersweet that pulled me in uh, a little closer than I wanted to be. So, um, yeah um they're 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 good to have um the uh in in this case it wasn't a pull string it was a bar that i could push but yeah i i, I think i know where he's coming from yep so, so i think you know john makes a really good point if it needs to be that we cycle people through if we can't get everybody in one place if we cycle people through i think chris would be happy to accommodate that we just need to know when people are coming or set up a time on saturday you know, drive around the highway garage. <laughs> well, John, if if you uh, get a get a call about me driving around, we'll know why. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's all right. Some people need to look in the window, so they tinted the windows at the highway garage, so you can't look in anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, great. Well, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, everyone, and um, I'll send out a doodle poll um, just so we can we can find a time where um, everyone can meet or most of us can meet. And uh, yeah, thank you, everyone, for for attending. Um, thank you, John, for coming as well. I appreciate all of the uh, contact behind everything.
Right. You're welcome. I actually just called, uh, I came in to uh, support the mini excavator because I really do think it's a useful piece of equipment. Yeah. I think it's going to be useful for the culvert cleaning, which Carolyn would say is very necessary, just so you know. Uh, it really is. But also, we've got a real interest in sidewalk projects, and that could be incredibly helpful for sidewalk projects, especially the fact that they've wanted to do sidewalk projects up and down North Main, North and South Main Street, never mind the old Deerfield sections. Yeah, yeah, I understand what he's saying about being able to, you know, move the dirt around a little faster too. I, I dug a pretty big hole in the front of my yard and um, I couldn't imagine doing that with a backhoe. Yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever I said, I'm sorry. John sent me a text that I was unmuted. I'm like, what did I say? <laughs> You were muttering under your breath, and I texted you before, I, so I caught you in time. Yeah. Yes, I do. My, this is why out. I mute myself, people. Yes. Yeah. It's good when you can wear a mask because you can say mumble whatever you want. <laughs> yep. Sorry about that. Thanks, everybody. Let me know when you want to talk about police HVAC, and I'm, I'll pop back in any time. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. They haven't actually asked a lot of questions because they remember it, John. <laughs> we know it needs to get done, but he did actually present to finance committee yesterday. So if you need well, we a few minutes, hold off he another can... year. We'll hold off another year. It's, it is what it is. We'll make it work. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. I don't think we need a motion to adjourn. Yeah, um, probably not. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get that sent out and, and thank you, uh, Casey, for uh, helping with all this. It's been, um, uh, yeah, it, I, I, don't, I don't know if I would be able to handle all these things coming in and, um, you know, the screen sharing and everything. I, I really appreciate it a lot. Well, I wasn't sure what we, I went, I didn't, I realized I hadn't resent everything for public works. So that's when I figured out ah, we'll do the screen share thing. So yeah, um, I will send out the revised spreadsheet and like I said, it may not have the comment about the Freightliner because I want to get it out so you guys can look at it before we try to doodle pull another meeting. Okay. All right. Well, um, yeah, I guess uh, we'll we'll talk uh, talk again soon. I'll I'll see if I can you know get that scheduled. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, everyone.